Directly, upon initiating her game plan, at the undermost point of ground zero, <laughs> she'd set her scheme in motion by rolfing Garrett's tyrannically overblown ego, <laughs> innervating his elan vital therethrough. In the process of putting this blueprint into effect, she'd have no choice but to downplay her own wants and desires for the sole purpose of re-winning Garrett's trust and affection. <laughs> she'd even go so far as to put up with the make-do indignities of being transitorily enslaved by him, <laughs> ministering to his every wild freak and morbid fancy until his smug, self-adulation reached the utmost maniacally delusional vertices of unpunctured vainglory and egregious gross-headedness imaginable, <laughs> blinding him to the lay of the land, i.e., what's what, how things are, and, most important, Who's in charge? With flint-like composure, she'd cool her heels for a spell until her errant lover's so-called inner child maturated to the point where it came to epitomize the apotheosis of puffed-up self-importance, the quintessence of egotistical complacency and the consummate incarnation of ostentatious outrequidance, <laughs> notwithstanding that it would cost her a crownless queen's ransom to prep him up in this vein, so as best to wreak her vengeance thereby. For it would be worth any price soever even if it meant sacrificing that which was dearest to her, for our beleaguered heroine to see Garrett do a grandiose Humpty Dumpty, to wit, a thundering fall from grace that would bring him to irremediable ruin, a veritable standstill of sticks and staves an end life of intolerable loneliness, an impasse of penniless destitution, and then some.